it's Amy from amyquilts.com and I'm going to show you how you can use the Janome quilt binder set for a fast finish. Here we go. So this is a great big binder attachment. It is not the bias binding taping foot. Uh, those are pretty cheap. You can pick them up for probably $20 and there's all kinds of cheap ones out there on the internet from these Chinese companies. Um, and just regular ones from your sewing uh, dealer. But uh, this is the Janome Quilt Binder Set. Hey, Michelle, from South Africa. Hello, hello. So what time is it in South Africa right now? Um, I have no idea what the time difference is. I'm gonna guess it's like probably eight hours difference, maybe. So I will say one of the biggest issues when using the quilt binder attachment is the size of the binding. I love that I only need to use a two inch strip on my binding. So don't have to fold it in half. It's just stick it in there. You know, you gotta put your pieces together, but you don't have to pre-fold everything. This part of the attachment does that for you, but it does about a half inch binding. So if you are used to trimming your quilt right along the edge of your top and giving yourself a quarter inch seam allowance, your binding is either going to go in deeper onto your quilt top than normal, or you're going to try to use that quarter inch seam allowance and you're going to leave an empty binding edge. And that's kind of what I've done. Let me pull up where I've already stitched because I have forgotten one of the basics, which is to leave yourself some extra batting around the edge of your quilt. So if you see my binding here, and you probably can't really tell it, I can definitely feel it. The edge of the quilt is here. Let's get where you guys can see. The edge of the batting is here, and I've got some weenie little fabric here, but I went ahead and trimmed it, and then I was like, ah, crap. Needed to leave that little bit of binding on there, or uh, batting on there. And so I'm just making do because this little table runner is a project for a shop hop. That starts tomorrow. So nothing like waiting to the last minute. So I'm just trying to make do. And if you're local, that means you get a nice sneak peek of our fabric and our project. So get into the corner, and I'm gonna stitch right off the corner. Stop right there. Gonna let it just tie off there. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut my thread. Some people leave a long tail. I cut it, I just don't want all the extra little bits in there. And then I'm just gonna pull this right out the back of the foot. I'm just bringing more binding through the back. You don't want to skip this part because then you don't have much room to work and maneuver. So I got about oh, 10 inches or so. And I'm going to put the foot back down. And then I'm just going to kind of finger press. And hopefully you guys can see this through the camera. And then I'm going to bring this around. So I've kind of finger pressed my binding. And then I'm going to use Kimberbell tape. This looks a lot like... Um, uh, what do you call it? Bandage tape, paper bandage tape, like you might get in the medical section, but this is actually a Kimberbell product, which they do machine embroidery designs. It's made to be stitched through. It won't gum up your needle. It peels off. You can even iron over it and it won't cause a big problem. So I'm going to use about a two inch piece and I'm going to flip my binding to the back. Working on the back of my table runner. And if I had left a little bit edge of that, that batting on like I told you about, this would be a lot easier. But I'm just going to basically fold that binding over on itself. I've got to kind of guesstimate it because I'm hanging out in the middle of nowhere because I left that batting out of the equation. I'm going to look, stick a post-it note on this binder uh, after, when I put it away that says, leave batting around your quilt. I always forget. 
So I've got it taped there. And the reason I use tape instead of pins is it's just a lot easier to stitch through it than it is to try to pin and not sew over your pins. And then I'm flipping it around to the front and I'm going to pull that binding around and just position it. And remember, I can't have it all the way up to the edge or it's going to go way up onto my project. And I don't want that. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm making a pretty little miter and folding it over. And, you know, honestly, this method is not for you if you want a perfect, perfect binding. I can get the corners to look pretty good. But I will admit, I use this when I am pressed for time, especially shop samples. And then I am just pulling that batting, or not the batting, the binding back through the, the, the guide here. So it's here, and I'm just kind of pulling it through till I'm at my corner. And... I'm going to get it right in that little corner spot. And I'm using my knee lift if you're wondering how I'm getting that foot to go up and down and up and down. I'm going to drop my thread down just because I want a nice start on the back and pulling my thread tails to the top. There we go. And I'm going to check my positioning here because remember I need to leave that gap because I didn't leave that extra batting. So I'm not bringing it all the way over into the throat of the tool, but about halfway. Double check my positioning, pull my extra batting or uh, binding to the back. And off I go. So it's going to stitch in place a couple stitches and then we're going. And I'm using a very um, narrow serpentine stitch, serpentine stitch. Uh, I adjusted it from what's on the machine, made it a little bit longer and a lot narrower. And that way I can kind of cover a little bit more area back and forth. Uh, and it's narrow enough that it's not going to create a little edge, you know what I mean? So it's not going to catch. We don't want to make like a toe catching ridge or something. Uh, the one thing, and I'm using the VD foot, the poorly named, unfortunately named VD foot. It's the narrow AccuFeed foot. Uh, the one thing I don't like about this, and let me get my little, my little stiletto so maybe you can see. All right, so on the VD foot, there's a groove right here for, you know, for you to put your thread through. And I tend to get my binding pops up in there. And usually all I got to do is just lift the foot and it falls back down. But I kind of wish that little part wasn't there. Um, I might could manipulate the placement of everything a little bit and eliminate that somewhat. All right, stitch into my next little corner here. Right to the edge. Letting it tie off. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. Hi, Allison. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Lee. Michelle. Oh, Michelle's our South African gal. So I know this isn't my schedule, but I thought I'd go ahead and pop on. It doesn't really slow me down to sit here and talk. And it keeps me from taking a Facebook break. So lifting my foot. Pulling it to the back, dropping that foot down, finger pressing, trying not to move the camera with my chest. Pull it forward and grab my little piece of tape again. We'll do the back first. Get that 45 on there. Really have got to remember to put that extra or not trim off all my batting next time. That makes a big difference on mitering those corners. Nope. Leave myself enough tape to wrap around. 
flip it over to the front and it'll kind of hold that fabric for me. And then fold it over, stick that on, pull it to the back. And then I just kind of start pulling it into place. And as I do, the binding will just kind of wrap around my quilt top. Sometimes you need to pull it through a couple of times just to get everything kind of lined up. The one thing I do not like when doing this is if you happen to have a join for your binding, like somewhere in here and you're trying to pull it through, like if there was going to be a join on the binding here, you know, I'd have to pull that through in order to get to the corner and then pull it back. And it can be quite difficult to pull it back into place. So I've got a little weird fold going on back here. So I'm just going to feel it, make sure everything's in there fine. Getting just a little bit of a weird fold there as it comes back through. See, there's a little pleat right there. And a lot of times as you go, those kinds of things just fall out. I do have to watch that tape because sometimes the tape will get stuck to the bottom of my AccuFeed foot. So there we go. Pulling, pulling, pulling. that needle down to pull up that bobbin thread. Get those threads up underneath the foot. I love using a stiletto. If you've never used a stiletto, it is a great little tool. All right, and I'm off and running. Does this work perfectly every time? Not always. Do I sometimes have to go back and fix something? Eh, sometimes. But you know what? It does it fast. And if getting a quilt done fast is something you need to do, then this is the tool that will help you do that. And I know for myself, I tend to stall out in the binding process. So two things happen. Either I stall out in the binding process and I don't get things bound, or it's something with a deadline and I absolutely have to get it done, so it has to get done fast. So this helps me. And of course the machine stitching is very, very um, secure. I'm looking at my sandwich now and wondering if I'm going to have just enough binding. Good golly. All right, so that's how I use the binding attachment. I cannot take the time to show you how I'm gonna bind the ends. I've done a video on that before. You can look for it on the Facebook page, but I hope this helps and I gotta get back to working. <laughs> Thanks for watching and bye-bye. So there you go. Bound those corners nice and fast. Check out more at amyquilts.com, visit our Facebook page, and if you're in the Lynchburg, Virginia area, come visit our shop, So Simple of Lynchburg. Like the video, tell your friends, and please subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos. Bye-bye.